Hello everyone, it's a joy again to be with you and I say hello to my friends in Asia and Sitio 3 in the Philippines and uh, but to all the Christians anywhere that would listen and love the truth and also to anyone who doesn't know Christ but you're curious, uh, I welcome you all and, and I hope that you'll get something out of this. Today I'm going to start in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. If you want to follow along with me, I encourage you to because it's important. The Bible says to test the spirits to see if they be of God. And just because some preacher comes on TV or on the internet doesn't mean that they are of God. It's very important that you test the Spirit. So I encourage you um, to look up uh, the Scriptures and follow along. 2 Peter chapter 3, and uh, starting in verse 3. Okay, it says this. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, Scoffers are people, mockers, people that mock, make fun of, um, and they have no respect for the things of God in this case, uh, more very likely or possibly. And uh, so the, in the last days, these kind of people are going to come and they're walking after their own lust, it says. And in verse 4 it says, and saying... Where is the promise of his coming? His meaning Christ. Where is this promise of the coming of Christ? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So we're talking about the last days here, and we're in the last days, and there's all kind of people saying, well, you know, um, they've been, those Christians have been saying, my whole life, ever since I was a kid, they've been saying, well, Christ is going to return soon. And, and they're saying, okay, uh, where, is, where is this? What are you talking about? I don't believe you. And we hear stuff like that nowadays, especially in the United States. Um, this country is not as Christian as it used to be. Although there's still many Christians here, there's a lot of people who are not even trying to follow Christ, and, and they're scoffers, they're mockers. They make fun of the things of God. They're not important to them. Second verse is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and starting in verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days, notice we're talking about in the latter times, in the last days. In the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Sounds like the kind of uh, times we're living in, doesn't it? We're living in the last days. And everywhere you turn, you find this kind of a thing. There are many other scriptures that we could read that show us that we are indeed in the last days. Uh, the last days, in, the Bible says with God, a thousand years is as a day, and a day is a thousand years. So, you know, when, when the Almighty says the last days, yeah, it might not mean, you know, in the last three years, although it might be. But we're talking about in the end times, and we are in the end times. Now our next verse is more of where I'm wanting to go. It's in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4. And 
And in verse 1, it's a single verse. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, you, here we are again, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's, very, there's several very important points to be made here right away. We're talking about in the last time, so we've already read about that. We are in the last days. So it, with this verse has to do with us, okay? And, and it says that in these last times, some shall depart from the faith. Now let's not get caught up in a bunch of uh, denominational stuff and, and, and disagreements and stuff. Let's just stick with the Word of God. I personally don't care about denominations. I really only care about the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, the things of God. And the Bible, the Holy Bible says here, and you read it in your own to be sure, it says, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. You can't depart from the faith unless you're in the faith. And it says some, not all, some will depart from the faith. And here's how they'll do it. They'll give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So this scripture makes clear there are evil spirits, seducing spirits, some uh, seduce is to basically try to get someone to do something that they know that they don't have any business doing. And these fallen angels, these fallen beings, they're really good at this. Now, you don't have to be scared to death if you're a Christian because a fallen angel doesn't have any power over you unless you give them power. And the main thing that they have is to deceive, to try to get you to believe something that's not true. For example, in the Garden of Eden, Satan approached Eve, Adam's wife Eve, and he questioned the words of God. He says, oh, has God said you can't eat of the fruit of the garden? So he starts questioning, deceiving Eve with what the Almighty said. And he said, God knows that when you eat this, your eyes will be open and you'll be as gods. See, and he speaks half-truths. When they ate of the fruit, they did know things that they didn't know, but it wasn't to their advantage. The Almighty had warned them about this because uh, it was not a good thing for them to do. But Satan seduced Eve into eating the fruit from the tree that Almighty God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from. And she also gave it to her husband. They both ate of it. But the, the point being here, they knew what to do and what not to do, and yet they were seduced. Eve was seduced and convinced to do what they knew was wrong. Notice also, uh, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. There's, there's a lots of doctrines of devils out there. And, and basically, anything that's not a doctrine of Almighty God is a doctrine of a devil, or, well, it comes from Satan, of course. And sometimes it's well-meaning people that uh, think they're speaking the truth. I think that's true sometimes. And yet... The Bible talks us to, again, I said, test the Spirit to see if it be of God. We're, we're to um, search the Scriptures and find out what is sound doctrine. And a doctrine of a devil would not be a sound doctrine. It might have a lot of, and probably would have lots of truth mixed with it, but it would be false because it would have a lie mixed with it as well doctrines of devils and there's various religions out there that that disagree with what almighty god says and of course that's a doctrine of the devil 
It won't stand up under scrutiny. The Almighty's Word does stand up under scrutiny. So, um, anyway, these uh, uh, doctrines of devils uh, and, and seducing spirits, they work in all kind of ways. You can make a list that's so long you couldn't write it on a piece of paper, but uh, he, Satan will use all... First, he'll try to pervert the Word of God. That's the first thing. He'll try to twist what God says and make it sound sort of right, but it really not be right to trick you into uh, not being where the Almighty wants you to be. And there'll be all kinds of things like, well, you know, um, if it has to do with love, it's okay. And, and so they'll find themselves in all kind of sexual activities and everything. It's like, well, you know, it's anything to love is good. That would be a seducing spirit convincing someone of that. Or to say, well, you know, part of the Bible, that's true, but the other part, see, anything to start breaking down your trust in Almighty God. Or if you become uh, discouraged, Satan will try to work in your discouragement to get you to throw up your hands. Notice what it says here again. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. The word Spirit's in a capital there. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly. Expressly means distinctly and clearly. The Holy Spirit is speaking clearly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. He'll try to use your discouragement to get you to throw up your hands and say, I'm done. Or uh, if you become depressed. Or he'll use people's pride. Some people have so much pride and, and he'll play on that and try to, to, to get you through that or through material things. Lots of people are so into getting stuff. There's nothing wrong with having material things, but they can get so involved in that that they become seduced and they chase that instead of Almighty God. Being seduced by the material things, money, um, uh, all kind of illicit sex, like I said, or maybe tempting you in ways like, well, God really doesn't love you. Uh, just look at all that's happened to you. And again, this list is so long, there's no way I could tell you all these things. But these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are to separate you from your faith in Almighty God. And, and again, the reason I know that's true is because I've just read it in the Word, to depart from the faith. It's important that you guard your heart. It's, I spoke about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago or so. You must guard your heart. It's your duty to guard it. No one else is going to guard your heart for you. In fact, they can't. It's your heart. You must read this precious, precious words of God. I mean, I've gotten this book up before and just hugged it. And maybe even kissed it. It, it's beautiful. It can save my life and does save my life. I'm instructed in the ways of righteousness with this. And I need to get into it and know what the thoughts and words of Almighty God are or I will become prey to a seducing spirit and I'll be fooled by doctrines of devils. And again, Satan doesn't really care how pretty you are or how much stuff you have. He doesn't care how smart you are. He doesn't care about all that stuff, except to the extent that he can use those things to get you to do, to lessen your faith in Christ. And he keeps working on that to try to get you as 1 Timothy 4, 1 says, to depart from the faith. They try to get you to give heed, to listen to doctrines of devils and to be seduced away from the things of God. This is a warning, people. Any Christian, especially, that, that does not take a warning from God to heart is not acting wisely. I don't care who they are, including myself, when the Almighty gives a warning, 
If you're a wise Christian, you will listen carefully. There's danger here. Now again, you don't have to be afraid of fallen angels and seducing spirits as long as you're maintaining your faith in Christ. You keep it strong. Guard your heart. Don't let the enemy be able to come in and wear you down and wear you out. You keep trusting the Almighty. You keep praying however you need to pray. Even Father, I, I feel tired. I feel beat up. I feel weak. I feel like I'm not where I used to be. Please help me. The Almighty's pleased with these kind of prayers. Pray them regularly and mean them from the bottom of your heart. So maybe uh, like the Bible says, uh, the first church in Revelation, it said they would left their first love. If you've done that, pray, Father, I, I just feel like I've left my first love some and I don't feel comfortable in that. Please help me to, to get that back and, and he'll help you. I, I talked about that some a week or two ago as well. So anyway, guard your heart and don't let, don't be seduced by a fallen angel, a demon, if you will. And don't be fooled by doctrines that are not godly. They're from Satan. They may be mixed with the Word of God. Like I say, a half-truth. Don't be deceived by that. It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to be aware and be on guard my number one priority in life is to get to heaven more than anything. I, I'm involved in other things. I'm a, I have a tractor trailer rig that I drive for a living and, and I have a home and a, a wife and family and, and friends and stuff and that, all that's okay. But my number one priority is to maintain my faith in Christ and get to heaven and only I can do that. Other people can assist me in that, but they can't do it for me. Surround yourself with good people that will encourage you that way. That's what I'm doing here today. And I mean that with all my heart. Today, I'm encouraging you to keep the faith, to guard your heart from seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I encourage you to fight the good fight of faith. Don't give in to this stuff because you will be attacked with it, and most likely you already have been. And I, I rejoice with you, all of you that are maintaining your faith. That's, that's wonderful. It's terrific. And for those of you who are feeling weak, um, know this. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you get off track, if you sin, I've sinned since I've come to Christ and I've had to confess my sin and have him forgive me. All of us, almost all of us sin sometime after we come to Christ because we're human. We don't have to, but most of us do. I have. And you can get back in good fellowship with Christ just by simply confess, Father, I did so and so. I'm so ashamed. Please forgive me. And he'll forgive you just like that. But you have to confess it and mean it. Okay? Uh, so, so don't let Satan get you off somewhere and say, See, you did so and so and so and so and so and so, so you'll never get to heaven. No, it's, he's a liar. That's a seducing spirit trying to trick you. Okay? Uh, regardless of the consequences, and there are consequences in following Christ, in the end, the consequences are great. There's eternal life. But the consequences in between, like they'll come scoffers and mockers. I've been mocked before. It's not fun. <laughs> Making fun of me for being a Christian. But thanks be to Almighty God, I stood strong in the face of that. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of Yeshua Jesus in the least. I'm proud to be a Christian. And that's why I'm here today. I'm encouraging you to be bold in the faith. 
to stand strong so others can see you standing strong too and they can be strong and for yourself of course you, you'll be attacked I promise you and you might be beaten you might be decapitated you might have your head cut off for the cause of Christ in the last days that's gonna happen to some people that could happen just brace yourself and be ready don't be afraid because the Almighty's with us it, it the world will give you a hard time without a doubt the world will attack you and belittle you they'll maybe try to befriend you a little bit and then stab you in the back you can expect it to happen but know this as well um, David King David said something like this one time if it had been uh, I'll probably, this is a terrible paraphrase if it had just been any old body out there that, that attacked me it would have been okay but it was someone went up that I went up on holy day to the temple with so sometimes it, it'll be a friend that'll, that'll give you a hard time for being a Christian or, or they, they may be getting weak and being drawn into the world and they might say, well, you know, come on, why, why do you have to be such a stiff-laced Christian all the time? You, you stand strong, a, a seducing spirit speaking through them, even right then with words like that. It might be someone you're acquainted with. It might be a relative. It, it comes in all forms. And... and I decided a long time ago when I was a teenager I started following Christ and I meant it with all of my heart and it's cost me it's cost me quite a bit in my life in, in, in a manner of speaking uh, but it's been worth every bit of it following Christ is worth it and I encourage you I'm not turning back. Uh, the title of this is basically, I've decided to follow Jesus. I, when I made that decision, that's final. Uh, of course, it says here, these, the, these uh, seducing spirits are trying to get people to depart from the faith, but with the help of Almighty God, who is with me to help me, and He's with you to help you, if you know Christ, you can do it. <laughs> And I'm, I have no plans of turning back. If I get into something I should be into by the help of Almighty God, I will, I will confess that and get right back on the right path. Hopefully that won't happen. But if it does, it has in the past. Don't stay there. Get back up. Don't let Satan knock you down and keep you down. Get back up. All right? So I, I've made the decision and it's final. And I'm not going to turn back, regardless of the cost. That's a big saying. <laughs> it's a very big saying. I've lost a lot in my life, but I have not turned back. And I encourage you the same way. I'm here today trying to encourage you to stay on the path. Okay? So, I'm going to sing a couple of verses to this little chorus. <laughs> Um, and I hope that it rings in your ears all this week. It was like this. There's more verses to it than this, but I'm going to sing two of them. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, Still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. I love you all and I hope you have a good week in Christ. God bless you.